Hey guys, so we're um covering a little bit of things of when you're working with code and especially in a team and you're trying to keep things where things are still working, but you're going to make some updates. And also you don't know necessarily how long you're going to work and you want to keep things running. Is actually just going to give us some tips on strategy wise, you know, how to go about that. Yeah, sure. So in this tool, um, every single tool we, 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 we create, we'll have a main kind of, or, or the, the most important branch of your code, right? So we call it main, we call it master. That was the name before. But that is supposed to be a working version of your script. When Whenever you're in main, that means your code is working to whatever point I was, right? So what I want you to do, Irfan and Riz one, whenever you open VS Code, the first thing you're gonna check is whether you are in the main um, branch or not. And you will notice that when I make this like this again, we do have a few branches. We have the main branch, the development branch. We have other two, which is exactly what I was gonna talk about. What I did, Irfan, is that I made sure that all your changes are saved, but they are on a different branch. So when you open VS Code, first thing first, you're going to check in which branch you are. Do not work in main. Do not work on that branch. You never work on that branch ever because we need a working state. And if Joe says, oh, you changed something that broke something, we can just switch back to main and it should be working. You see what I mean? So we need a working version all the time. You are always going to be working in the development branch, all right? That's where you're gonna be supposed to be working. But what happened? Well, you started working on the faster recoding function. I don't know if you remember that. So. When I look at it, and this is the cool thing, that's the reason why you create branches for those kind of things, is that at that time, what you did was that you changed something in here. We have the start recording, we have the stop recording, but we created the process suspended functions that you were going to use. But you made a change in record chat here at the top of that, that broke everything because what you did is that you grabbed, because you were testing and that's okay, you know, I'm not telling you not to test. What you did is that you grabbed this command here and you put it in a global environment up here without checking whether that would work or not. You just copy pasted the code in there. And actually that's what you look in the note that I made. So in the note is you just put the run command in there and you just put process suspend in there and it was saying PID or name and then you have to go and you left that in there. And when we tried to run it, everything was broken. You know what I mean? So what you do is first of all, oh, this is where we were. We were in the, this is where we were. At that point, Joe tells you, you know what? We need faster recording. We need we, we, we need to test that. That's when you create a new Is there a, Let me interrupt you there just for a second, because I have a I have a question that that applies to what you're saying. Because I was gonna say sometimes you're doing general updates to to not so but sometimes you're implementing, you're adding some new functionality. And is that also when you decide on whether you create a whole brand new branch? Exactly. So, okay. so, for example, notice that this point right here is common to this branch, but it is also common to this fix that I created right here. You see that? Because I was here, Joe told us, you know what? We can do some faster recording, whatever. And in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I have to, I have to test that. I don't know. That's going to break some code. You create the branch and you can start testing and whatever. But then you realize, oh, there was this issue that I needed to fix, but I need to fix that on the main development branch. And you do that, you just fix that. And now we have it and I have the fix on my main already, but the 
code that you're using to test stuff is not messing with none of that. For us, it looks like we were here, you fixed something, and we put the fix back to the main script. Whatever you're testing is on its own thing and it doesn't mess with anything. That's basically whatever I'm doing. But notice this. You see that stash right there? You see what is called a stash? You can also do that if you want. Let's say that you're in your development branch and now you're testing something. You know what? Let me let me let me grab this in here and and put it up here. And you know that that right here, I have it like this. Now my whole thing is broken. I like what I was thinking at the moment. I don't want to lose it. How can I do that without having to create a whole new branch or losing it? You just do whatever you are, git stash. And that saves your work, but cleans it. Look, it disappeared. It disappeared, but it's not gone. When you look back at your graph, you will notice now that you have what is called a stash in there. And you can have as many stashes as you want. So whenever you are working on something and you're testing stuff, if you don't want to create a whole branch for it, which is what I actually would suggest, just create a branch that is only about that and that you're testing and making sure that it works on that branch. But if you don't want to do that, what you can do is stash your changes. Just stash it, and that would clean the code. It just goes away, but it is saved. And that right here, when I look at it, it only has the changes that I had. And if I want to have those changes back, you just right-click on it, and you apply the stash if you want to keep it as a stash or pop the stash, which takes it out and removes it and also applies it. Dropping it just deletes it completely without actually, um, without um, uh, applying it. So let's say that I want to apply it, but not delete it. If I do this, I just say, yes, apply the stash. And now my code is there, you see, it's back. <laughs> it's so easy, but I keep my stash because I didn't tell it to delete it. But let's say that I don't want that. Let's remove this. Let's say that I want to apply and pop it. So right click, you hit pop. I say yes. And what it's going to do is not only apply my changes, there they are, but it's also going to delete the stash as well. It's, it's doing both. So again, for what you're doing, um, I never say, like, don't experiment. Of course, you have to experiment. Of course, you try something. But don't leave the code broken. <laughs> because in the middle of the afternoon, Joe says, like, I cannot work with any of my scripts. There was some change that you did with one of the um, the doc variable. For the, yeah, the doc variable for the notify class. You change that. Remember, a lot of tools are actually dependent on that one thing. So you have to be careful. So you experiment and stash your changes if you don't want to create a new branch. If you do create a new branch, right, like this one, I just created that. I uh, This is the code that you added, the drop downs for everything. Um, and this is the last part where, we, where you were. So this is the one that I was, that's the last part of your code. If you look at the code, you have a lot of things that are added in there for the preferences, I think, or what was it? You added something in here. Now, the point is, if you are using branches like this, just remember to switch back to the main when you finish. But if you don't remember it, it's OK, because as soon as Joe says, oh my god, this is not working, and I come in, I will see that I'm not in the main branch, and I will just switch to main. And now the code is working again. See what I mean? That's basically what we need to do. And especially when we depend on these kind of things to be working during the day. Yeah, th th that was just a phenomenal overview, Isaiah. Um, a right. couple of quick questions. Well, first off, this this still using Git with VS Code with these branches and stuff that highlight. That's what it just makes it so easy, right? 
Um, right. I can't imagine trying to implement what you just described, even in studio with just keeping track of, even if we're not working on a team saying, I want to add some functionality to my script and being able to quickly revert back. And I, I know he has some stuff in there, but really, really cool. Um, one question I had was all of this, everything you described here is still local files. Is that right? Yes. It's not, so, so, you didn't publish it to GitHub or anything. This is just local no, until you do a public. That's okay. in your computer right now. Yeah. yeah. And because we all use the same drives with the same, and that's all stored in that same thing. That's how it all works right. with, with us. Okay. Cool. Right. So here at the bottom, you could see that you have this little cloud button. Yeah. Now, if we didn't have the S drive, we would right. have to push it to GitHub. To, for the other people to see together, he would have a, to download it to his computer, okay. and then we're both pushing changes to the same location, and they are not going to be in sync unless you hit the sync button. This right here, there, there, there will be like a button. If there were changes, you uh -huh. would see a button that says, "Hey, the original, the main over there has some changes that you want to push uh, to pull before you push anything in and stuff like that." It keeps the things in sync. And sync as we're using Dropbox, we don't need it basically, but yeah. that's okay. All right, well, but, that, 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 exactly the same for, for any other like online versions of this as well. Uh, one more question about the stashes. So, this stashes is right now zero, it was zero, and then you add another stash. So, the re recent stash becomes stash at zero, and this one becomes stash at one. So, this Ooh. numbering has to do something. No, that's because I didn't put any names to it. So basically, when you create a stash, so let's make some changes. We go to the development. Um, and in the development, I create some changes, save it. Now I want to stash it. Whenever you create a stash, get stash, you can put a, a, a name to it. I don't know if I have to use the dash M or whatever. But this is my, um, uh, how do I call it? experimenting with um i don't know uh local files i i wonder if that's gonna ai is gonna take care of that in the future of coming up with a name for now it. notice that now it has a name right and when i look at my stash at that location it has a name now you see that okay. so basically so the reason why you're looking at me using the uh, terminal to do this is because at the moment, I don't know if you have that, it would be great if you can test it, but right now there is a, uh, here you can stash stuff from your VS code window, but it has a bug. So if you make any changes right now, I have it here you can right click on it and say stash changes like here you see that mm -hmm. but if you click that it would enter a loop it starts stashing and stashing i reported that error a while back if you do it from the gui interface that's the reason why vs code is so great because it has all of these things in the gui as a button mm -hmm. but if you do that especially if you have more um repositories like this it would enter a loop and it will create thousands of stashes. You know what I mean? Oh. So I'm not using that. And at least that command is very simple. It's just git stash and that's it. Or if you want to put a message in it, you just put a little bit of a message. And what yeah. that does is that in your list in here, you see how I can see the commits, right? At the bottom, I have the stashes as well. So in my stashes for talk AI, he would tell me what they are, you see? And I can just pop them, apply it, pop it, delete it. And those work. So applying from here or dropping or renaming and those kind of things, they all work. The only thing that doesn't work at the, at the moment is when you click stash changes that it enters a loop, I don't know why. So, so but we, once they fix that, then you will be able to just right click and stash your changes, you know? And, and actually here at the top, you see that button, you see that stash all changes. So if you have a lot of changes, you just click that button and it saves it. Like, like it is just for when you're experimenting 
And then later on, you just, oh, I'm experimenting. I want to continue experimenting. You just apply your stash and continue doing whatever you were doing. And that's one, it, you know. One, one more question. So you are now in development branch. And you can apply your stash at any level in the graph, like. Yeah, yeah. So, so if I go to faster coding here, mm -hmm. so you can now apply you have to be careful. The where you're placing that, <laughs> yeah, depends on the files that you changed because yeah. if this branch and that both uh, apply yeah, to the, uh, it might tell you that that is not a good idea or something. But if I try it, you can use the reinstate index. But that would reset everything to what it was. Sometimes it would allow you to do it. Like right now, I just applied it. You see that? Mm -hmm. I did. No problems. But in other cases, if both uh, files change exactly the same thing, it would, yeah, it that, would complain if, about it. Yeah, for, for simple, uh, if there is a conflict in multiple sites. Right, yeah. You would, you would get a conflict. So right now... Yeah. Um, it, it behaves as a normal merge. Like for example, right now, if I go to if I go to that, and I also make another change, right? So this is what I changed, but my stash also changed that same file on that location. So my stash has changes here. That's my stash, but right now I just made a change in that same location. I would assume that it would not let me do it. I haven't tested it, but I, I would assume it would not. It would not. So if I try, I will apply the stash. Yeah, unable to apply stash. Your working tree changes would be overwritten. Please commit your stash, your changes first, and then try again. You can do that. So you can now. So, so I would create a separate branch and then try to commit it. <laughs> no, no. What I would do is stash those changes. <laughs> Yeah, create another stash. The only thing is, please don't have changes mm -hmm. when you're trying to apply the stash. So you can either stash it or dismiss them before going ahead and applying your change. But again, that's, stashes that's... are just quick things that you're checking with. But if Joe says, you know what, we need, we need to make this faster, and you know that this is not just you experimenting. Is that that's that's a whole feature that we're gonna do? Mm -hmm. Then create a branch and do your changes in there so that it doesn't mess with the main script. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as soon as you finish, okay, I'm gonna go to bed. Just double click on main and go to sleep. And that way, nobody gets affected by the by the problem that you are just experimenting. And if Joe needs to see what you're working on. Oh, just double click on it and it will tell you, this is the last things that I have been doing. This is what I've been doing. I put this here um, and I actually did this in here too. I put the preferences. This is what I added, you know, like I can see what I was doing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you need to see what were you up to, yeah, we can see it. But the main script hasn't been touched. You see what I mean? And that's very important when we work in a team especially and especially when that team relies on that file to be working because right. we for example i just opened my prompt assistant and part of the tools here yeah that is pointing to rest finder if you change rest finder it's gonna mess with my thing customers list if i click on that and you have changed the code it's gonna mess with my tool if i so we depend on all of those tools and any changes you do to those, like Windows Snipping Tool, I made some, like, did you guys notice when I changed the Windows Snipping Tool? If you guys use Windows Snipping Tool, you didn't even notice that I changed it twice. And I was experimenting because I saw something in the forum about the DPI per monitor DPI. And I was experimenting with that and I was testing stuff. You know, you never heard Joe saying like, oh, my Windows sniffing tool stopped working. Of course not, because I do it in a separate branch. I just do it there. And when I finish, I just go ahead and go back to the main branch and he doesn't even notice. Nobody notices. And that's basically part of what I wanted to talk about. The, the other thing that if people aren't familiar with using Git and everything is 
that's not creating like an entire backup of that file when you do that. It's it's compartmentalizing those minor tiny changes and it keeps track of all of it. It's insane how amazing it is at doing this stuff, right? So um, I highly recommend you check out our Intro to VS Code course where I think, Isaiah, you talk some about using Git, right? Some of the Git integration, uh, but it, it's incredibly powerful. Right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Cheers.